Hey, greetings YouTube, Captain Machine here, back for another video. And once again, I'm doing a bit of an update. And on top of that, I'm going to give you some RPG news, because I haven't done that in a long time. So, um, where have I been? That's the key one, really, because I've been away for a while now. And basically, I had caught swine flu. So I got my uh, Tamiflu prescription. I took that, and it made me feel better. It took a week for it to take effect, but it made me feel better in the end. Um... So all of you out there who had it as well, you know, you know the pain. All of you who are worried about catching it, don't worry, you're not going to die. I'm asthmatic, I'm one of the high risk groups and I didn't die. So it's nothing to worry about, it'll just knock you off your feet for a week. You know, it gives you time to think anyway. Uh, speaking of which, I have been doing some soul searching to try and find out what I want to do. And basically one of the many things I've done is I've quit World of Warcraft to give myself some free time because I wasn't enjoying the game anymore. I just deluded myself into thinking I was. And basically I'm going to use that time to go out and socialise and basically take in some of the sights and sounds of Yorkshire and England and things like that. And see my budget clears up at some point in the future, I may even go abroad. As always, the camera's coming with me and I'll be filming it for posterity. Right, um, oh yes, uh, well, this thing I'm waving around, it's a pen I got from the fair. It's made out of wood, apparently which is 150 years old apparently, there you go. Uh, I'm not sure about this end, I think it's some kind of plastic or metal, and this end is just simply just a, a big biro shoved in there. And basically it writes really well, it feels really comfortable in the hands. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. Um, won't fit my pencil case, mind you, but it will inspire me, so that's good. Right, um, we've suffered a massive amount of writer's block recently, there will be a video about that very shortly, how to overcome that, because it is a massive problem that a lot of GMs suffer from, and I'd like to not give the definitive answer to it, but at least give my ideas of how to overcome such an affliction. It is one. Right, um, and basically I'm getting ready for Furnace 2008. 2009 when we're talking about this, 2008 was last year. It's three months away, and basically during that time I'm going to try and write something for running it. I'm going to stick to one game this year, not two. And going to see, you know, have, have a laugh with it basically, meet some friends. Um, meet the people there that I've met before, blah blah, have a lot of fun, as always the camera will come with me and maybe I'll be able to get an interview with someone or just get some footage of random ramblings on. As I said before in my last video about Furnace, it's really hard to actually get footage of the actual games because well first of all people object to it and if anyone objects to it obviously then I'll, I'll t respect their wishes and not film. Um, secondly, uh, role playing is... Not what I would call a spectator sport. It's, it's nice to watch snippets of it every now and then, but uh, it's hard to work that into a reasonable you know, video. Right, so the news part. Uh, I've got two pieces of news for you today. Well, three actually. Uh, first of all, I picked up Pathfinder. Uh, there appears to be some kind of shortage with Pathfinder at the moment. Uh, I did mention this on my blog, link in the sidebar, um, that basically Paizo have completely sold out of their first print run. Uh, it doesn't mean to say that you can't get your hands on a copy, it just means that every single copy they've got after they've fulfilled all their pre-orders on the website, which was a very small percentage of the overall produced, every single copy was sold to the distributors, so the distributors have them now. And basically that means that the distributors are of course distributing to various different stores. Now I've heard a rumour, and so I've not been able to confirm this, but if anyone can please let me know. Um, that Amazon, or at least Amazon.co.uk, have had a non-arrive, non or oh, they'll have like 2,000 and none have turned up. Uh, whether that's just a delay, I'm not quite sure, but so far, well, from what I've heard, they haven't got any. Um, secondly, uh, the shop I went to, uh, Patriot Games, my friendly local gaming store, uh, ordered like 25 of them and got 8. Uh, luckily, I managed to get my hands on a copy because I went on release date, and they were kind of to save one for me because they'd phone up and ask, and uh, to be honest with you, um, you know, I would rather give my money to the you know to my local store, so that they can stay in business and I have somewhere to go and hang out when I want to go and hang out with gamers. Uh, by the way, if you are in the Sheffield or the South Yorkshire region, go to Patriot Games. Uh, again, link in the sidebar. And if you like your role playing games, your card games, your board games, your war games, um, you know you can. They've got all sorts there. Um, regrettably, because I live so far away, I can't attend their nightly role playing sessions or whatever they've got running. So that's a shame, but. Maybe when I, in the future when I get myself a car, I can start going. You never know. Right, um, a second bit of news. Uh, regards to Hellfrost. Now, when Dave Bluer um, sold me Hellfrost at the 
convention in UK Game Expo in um, Birmingham. He did tell me that the Gazetteer and the Beastry for it were coming out shortly. Now, that appears not to be the case. However, Dave has not lied to me. The documents, uh, the master file, as it were, has been finished for a long time now. It would appear the printers uh, have had some issues with printing it. And at professional courtesy, I don't believe that AAA games will actually tell you what the problem was. Um, but what they've done is the moment they realised there was a problem they got on the phone and they phoned around and they found another printer which in this case is Cubicle 7 which those of you not in the know is also the publisher of Slay Industries and the owners of Slay Industries uh, which I've been getting into in a really big way because I'll be running it again and I've had a lot of fun with it so I'll be doing some videos about that in the near future um, so it will be coming out in November as opposed to sometime in the summer like they promised but I'm prepared to wait if they're going to release a good product. Uh, it does make running the game a slightly bit harder for those people who need more source material. And I'd like as I have as much source material as I get my hands on. So, yeah, uh, we're looking forward to those. It'll be more fitting, I suppose, to have Hellfrost products come out in November. Uh, but until then, obviously, you've still got all their, um, all their PDF adventures. Link in the sidebar. And mm, it'll be a lot of fun. And finally... Yes, finally. Um, Fantasy Flight Games, for those of you who don't really know, published Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and Dark Heresy, which is one of the 40,000's role-playing game. Now, I did, in one of my first ever videos, uh, predict the death of the Warhammer RPG. And I had to edit that to take someone's name out because that's one of the many things I learned, the many mistakes I learned from that people don't like to be mentioned by name, so without their permission, obviously. So... I've taken the, taken the name out and re-edited it and it actually ends up being my second video because after that I'd released another one. So that is actually my first video, you can tell the quality is terrible. If you want to, go and watch it. If not, I understand why. And basically it would appear that I'm some kind of weird soothsayer because... <laughs> oh god. Basically since I've acquired the license, they've had it for like a year, maybe two now, they've released like two books for it, one of which we already knew was in production and one I suspect was already in production as well when they bought the license they just kept them in print and for the rest of it they haven't done a fantastic job of keeping the books in print and it would appear they're winding it down now obviously they're still continuing continue to do the dark heresy and all the 40k stuff and they're going to rogue trader next and then they've promised they're going to do angels of death as per the schedule a couple of years time so i'm really looking forward to that but this is warhammer fantasy roleplay third edition which appears to be a big shiny box set, which is great because I love box sets and I love shiny stuff because ever since 40, uh, fourth edition has come out, everything's bloody shiny, which is fine. No gripes about that at all. I like fantastic pictures. You'll find a ton of them in Pathfinder, really inspiring. However, it would appear that this particular role playing game has fallen down the Dragonlance trap of trying to make it some kind of hybrid card game, dice game mechanic and. So far, on the website that I've been looking since the time of this filming, nobody seems to be massively excited about this. It's a $100 box set for a game which people are going, uh, what? It, it's such a radical departure from the rule set that a lot of people are questioning the sanity of fa fantasy flight games because it's, it's odd that no one's white knighting them because they have got such a, such a massive fan base because they do release some really good board games. I mean, really, really good board games. Um, some of the best board games in the industry are released by Fantasy Flight Games. But nobody's enthralled with the idea of this. And from what I've heard, the box set, which is $100, like I said before, is only going to contain enough materials for a three-player game. That's one GM and three players. What led them to think that was a good idea, I'm not quite sure, because the average role-playing group has four to six players. Either way, um, it's a massive investment, and even with the, even with the exchange rate, hundred dollars is going to be very expensive in the UK because we do pay well above the odds. Uh, if you just take a dollar price for a book or a box set and then convert it to pounds, um, it's rarely that in the UK. It's usually that and then ten or fifteen percent added on top of it. So that's something we have to put up with as UK gamers. So. Um, not looking forward to it. Uh, if I hear any more news about it, I'll let you know. Uh, link in the sidebar to the announcement. And that's it, basically. That's all the news I've got for now, all the update I've got for now. You guys have a good time. And um, 
more videos to come very shortly because I've got time now. Bye bye.